Okay, so hi, I'm Agota. I'm an anthropologist, uh, anthropologist at the History and Art Museum in Zalo, which is in Romania. And uh, I'm going to talk about roadside weeds. It's going to be more, uh, you will understand better what, why I gave the title roadside weeds from my poster. But uh, this is going to be, uh, this presentation is going to add a context and a kind of other dimension to the poster. And it's important for you to know that that's supposed to be Ad Adonis Vernalis or spring, spring pheasant's eye and a bottle of Adovern, which used to be a heart medicine. Uh, uh, so I'm going to look at how weeds are valued and uh, what this value is going is does mean in the beginning of the 20th century in Transylvania uh, in Kolozsvár, uh, which then is part of the dualist Austro-Hungarian Empire, but now it's Kolozsvár in Romania. And for the purpose of this presentation, I will not go into details about the 1918 transition to Romania, but I will treat the whole time as like uh, a continuation. So in 1904, following the initiative of the botanist Pater Bela, the Transylvanian Agricultural Association sends a proposal to the Minister of Agriculture asking to, one, make medicinal plants the object of study, thus cultivating them in the country and making them marketable. Two, equipping the same year a medicinal plant research station within the Agricultural Education Institution from Kolozsvár. Three, providing them uh, with uh, medicinal plant processing facilities. And four, publish the results from research already started two years earlier on medicinal plants. Thus, what all the books, pamphlets, and later members of Pater's academic kinship network calls the first medicinal plant research station is born in Kolozsvár. Uh, this is how Pater summarizes the goal of the research station. Uh, and whilst I will be talking of other aspects of this goal on my poster, here I want to emphasize the part where the station makes as its research ob object the composition of the cultivated medicinal plants and their active components in order to deduce their true value. Um, Pater does rec oh. Pater thus recognizes that in order to promote Transylvanian plants, they had to bring to the forefront their superior chemical qualities. Indeed, one of the first things acquired by Pater was the equipment of a chemical laboratory, that one, in 1909, and the new chemist, Irk Karoy, and then another one in 1923, Kop Elemir, who, after Pater retired, became the director of the station. Uh, kind of through this. <laughs> I mean, that's Kopelame there. He's a chemist and Pater a botanist. I will talk about them more. Uh, uh, who becomes the director of the station after Pater and, who's, uh, and on whose memoirs a lot of this presentation is re it relies. Uh, so on one hand, the aim of the station was to promote the chemical quality of wild gather plants. So it wasn't just about cultivated plants, also about wild gather plants. And on the other, however, to promote and increase the chemical quality of cultivated plants and in a true high modernist vision, introduce wild medicinal plant species into more controllable cultivations where they could work on improving, ameliorating them both in yield and chemical composition. Thus, by the time Pater's retirement in 1931, they attempted to introduce 136 wild medicinal plant species. I mean, attempted and failed at most of them. <laughs> experimented with artificial fertilizers and the effect on plants and on their compositions, and thus calculating yield and profitability. And these are, uh, so I'm trying to use the words they use, like yield, profitability, and obviously they're translated from Hungarian. So as you can see, I kind of explained some of them uh, on the slides. Uh, and they worked on emphasizing and then bettering or even extracting the oil or other chemical molecule compositions from medicinal plants, for instance, assessing the fatty oils in caraway seeds, extract opium from poppies, or following the changing alkaloids in sick plants. Uh, yeah. Through such work on the chemical composition of plants, Pater achieved on an international market the popularity of Hungarian meat is mint, Hungarian mint, especially spearmint oil, higher in carbon content than the then acknowledged American, German, and Russian mints. Again, these are the way they talk, and I'm kind of not quoting, but paraphrasing uh, Pater and, so, and some of these peoples around here. St. Benedict's thistle, chamomile, and sweet flag, 
uh, or Calamus to keeping in close contact with German pharmacies and sharing his research and experiment results with them. Not only did they work on promoting local plants, but on acclimatizing plants already popular on the international market because of their high oil contents, oils contents, such as Michin mint, a peppermint commercial cultivar, and Japanese mint, 11 rose species, among them acclimatizing Bulgarian and French species. Ah, sorry, I don't know, my tongue is... Um, so, Bulgarian and French species of rose, English and lavender... Pre in <sighs> okay, English and French lavender species. They were also experimenting with comparison in compound composition between soil and weather condition uh, with species, species such as Carum carvi, some rose species, Digitalis purpurea, which some of you might know as the, uh, where they uh, make the digitali, dig, Digitalia, which is another heart, um, heart uh, medicine which is still used. Uh, Atropa belladonna, also a poisonous plant that is used in medicine, uh, to ascertain the best conditions for plants to make more compounds. So this is the important one, they have to make more compounds. Uh, Kopp argues, so this is Kopp the chemist uh, after uh, Pater, argues in 1944 that the birth of the research station was the natural consequence of the evolution of the sciences, although it needed the wise insight of Pater. Kopp explains that the idea was ripe as the evolution of pharmacology realized that it needed botany and chemistry and further recognized the need of agriculture in order to be able to truly hold the whole knowledge in hand. Thus was born the need for the separate science of medicinal plants. While this was an alluring interdisciplinary vision of the evolution of sciences, starkly opposed to the more current vision of increasing disciplinary divides, the story was not that simple. Although Kopp argues that the professionalization of a one could argue holistic science for medicinal plants as encompassing all these other disciplines came from a natural evolutionary need of the sciences, and he says that this is evidenced by the fact that after the Kolozhva research station, there are other research stations opened in Vienna, Budapest, and on so weiter. Uh, a late a Chede, who's a later student of this Pater and Kopp's kinship network, claims that Pater's vision came from a line of voices warning against the increasing professionalization of chemistry, experimental pharmacology, and synthetic pharmaceuticals. These voices included Alexander Church, an admirer of Pater's, who at the end of the 19th beginning of the 20th century proclaimed that after humanity will have ruined us, our health with the many chemical agents, we will return to medicinal plants. So that's Church. Um, others were Sebastian Nipe, Nipe, which you might uh, recognize from the Nipe remedies, which are still popular, uh, a Bavarian priest and forefather of natu naturopathic medicine, Hugo Schulz, a German pharmacologist studying the application of medicinal plants in hospitals, and Ludwig Kröber, a pharmacologist supporting the medical use of medicinal plants. Such resistance against the polluting products of synthetic chemistry and this industry were already emerging in the 19th century when chemists themselves protested against the environmental and human damage of industrial chemistry. The war between synthetic or artificial pharmaceuticals and natural medicine plants, medicinal plants was therefore already on the rise by the time the establishment of the research station. Thus, short of a straightforward backing from an evolution of sciences, the research station had to constantly work on attaching chemical and, and pharmacological knowledge to medicinal plants, as well as increase their economic potential. So here we go back to Adonis and Adovern. Um, so such ideas that you have to connect pharmaceutical and chemical knowledge to plants, as opposed and have them marketed as plants as opposed to synthetic uh, uh, chemistry, were voiced by Alexe Potlok, a young agricultural research who, researcher who joined the research station in 1920s, who, along agricultural research papers, wrote promotional materials on the importance of the medicinal plant industry for Romanian, uh, for Romanian in, for Romania in daily newspapers. So, it wasn't only Potlok, Pater and Kopp and all these people's ca people kept writing like pamphlets and really like promotional materials for the state, for the people and kept promoting plants. Uh, I will show you on the poster more about it. Uh, but here he showed his concern, so Potlok showed his concern about importing all the medicines the country needed while cheaply exporting the plants these medicines came from. 
He mostly took issue with the poor state of the processing part of the industry, with almost no existing laboratories and factories or installments that would transform medicinal plants in different pharmaceutical spe specialties. Trade thus being limited to the export of plant raw materials, while both internal and external trade being poorly organized. In 1937, he even brings up the argument of an eventual war that would need a large quantity of pharmaceuticals. Quote, in the medicinal plant domain little was done and it is condemnable for us to tolerate that our goods are bought abroad for very low prices for us then to import it back in the form of pharmaceuticals or only packed more beautifully paying very high prices. Unquote. So Potluck then called for more and better organized research stations as well as the organization and capitalization of medicinal plant cultivation and collection. He wanted the state to fund and organize the export of medicinal plants and to include into the agriculture industrialization program the organization of chemical and pharmaceutical industry. So he tried to connect the agricultural industry to the pharmaceutical and medicinal industry and then establish the medicinal laboratories and factories for aromatic plant distillation. Uh, and uh, here is uh, a memoir of uh, Guido Falb Ishvan, who was a former pupil of Pater Bela. And he was one who, I mean, sometimes they say to each other that this person in their memoirs of each other, so this whole kinship network, that this person was uh, very helpful in, uh, for, the important, for supporting the important case of medicinal plants. So someone says this about Guido Falvi. And this is in his memoirs about his work uh, for supporting the medicinal plant case. In the 40s, there were years when we transported more than six wagons of medicine, medicinal plants. In 1941, we achieved a record with spring, spring pheasant's eye. So this is Adonis Vernalis. 175 hundredweight left. That meant that almost eight wagons of raw materials were gathered, two thirds by gatherers from Doboka. That's where he was. Uh, blah 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 once the stud farm from Juk called us on the phone that their pasture was taken over by an army of women why did i send them there i said that i did not but they should be happy if they will cut down the very poisonous spring pheasant's eye if their foal tasted it it could become sick so thus they, re they resign themselves to the matter so we pressed down with the hay press the carefully inspected pheasant's eye and with about 12 carts sent them to Bonsida center 12 kilometers from us from the pheasant's eye, they produce the adover and heart medicine, especially in Switzerland. Plants in wagon lots, a part of this, we only send hazel leaves. And then he talks about other plants. And that's a picture from his book of how they put like medicinal plants in the train wagons. So the difference between plants valued as treasures and devalued as waste i.e. as weeds, in the case of this story, is whether or not scientists could prove that medicinal plants are legitimately useful for humans. To recognize plants as, medic as medicines, they had to be tied in their bodies to human bodies. Weeds cannot become commodities because there's nothing in them that would allow them to become commodities. They have to be turned into medicinal plants and that does not only depend on recognition. The medicinalness of plants had to be made visible and produced in this case through the means of the co-working between agriculture, chemical, botanical, pharmacological sciences that had to connect human bodies to plant bodies and that they kept doing through this, I'm done, through these plant pamphlets and all these like um, promotional materials in, uh, in daily newspapers. Uh, yeah, so yeah, they did this. Uh, so that is, plants had to be turned into legitimate healers of human bodies in an era when chemical extraction and isolation of pharmacologically active substances and their subsequent synthesization into new artificial chemical molecules was gaining new territories. But the attachment of chemical and pharmacological knowledge to plants was not enough. Plants and this knowledge had to be made to travel alongside commodity chains and it is this traveling uh, that I will show again through, narr through their stories of how they tried to co-opt people into coming into this commodity chain with plants. Okay.